Oh, my mic's muted. Hello? Can you hear me? Look, I'll be honest. This may be kind of messy, but I just was like, I was sitting there. I was sitting in on the podcast forum or our podcast uh, comments, which I know I shouldn't read. Um, and I was reading YouTube comments and I know I shouldn't read them, but really I'm frustrated. I'm very frustrated. And I was like, you know, why, why can't I, why I'm frustrated, but, and then I realized, oh my God, I have a, I have a stream that I could talk to. So I decided that I would just go live and start talking about how I feel. Tonight, you will be acting as my therapist tonight. It's going to be more of a serious conversation and I'm not serious very often, but I think I'm just going to talk because I'm sick and tired of, you know, I'm just sick and tired of a couple things and I just, I don't know really how to really get it out, but like, it's just, it's just like a, it's very frustrating to, um, so I don't know, this, this is really what's frustrating to me. Uh, and this is part of my, um, part of my, uh, yeah, I'm coming out as a homosexual. <laughs> no, but part of my, um, what I enjoy about streaming or, you know, people joke and say I don't stream, which is true, or podcasting. Part of what I enjoy is being silly. I love being silly. I love saying things that, if I'm being honest, most of the time I don't even believe myself. Most of the time I know the answer to them. But I like to say things because I think it's funny to get people a reaction out of people. And often it does get a good reaction out of people. I get, I get the reaction I want. I make people laugh. I make people think, oh my God, he's so unhinged right? It's, it's silly, right? And I love doing that kind of thing. But truly, there's so much more depth to my character than just being a silly, messy, gay loser. You know what I mean? Or like is, is the way that I, I feel like th that I put out. And it's my fault, really. Like I, I just, I, I, I put out only the silly, like jokester sort of like lack of care for others almost, um, I sort of put that out there and I get upset when people perceive me as such. So what I'm trying to say is, is I think moving forward, uh, I need to drop the facade, I think a little bit more and have more personal moments with the audience because I truly don't want people to perceive me as being as messy as they think. Because like I read these comments and they're like, man, like some, some of these comments really get to me the where they're just like, I could never spend, I can't, Austin must be insufferable. And it's so hurtful to me because I get that because with the way that the clips that I put together on, on things, but it's like, I pride myself in when I hang out with people and I spend time with people, I pride myself in ensuring that whoever I'm with feels like they're having a good time. And I often sacrifice a lot of my own happiness to make what I feel a lot of other people more comfortable and a lot of other people happier. And I've always been that way. And I don't really put that. And what's frustrating is people don't really see that side of me because they see the jokester saying unhinged, being a Karen on a podcast. And of course there's, there's so, there's so much, there is truth. To, there's, there's truth. I'm not saying that I'm playing a character completely. There is truth. Like, yes, I do advocate for myself when it comes to customer service, but that has been extrapolated into like me, like berating service workers, which just isn't true. I like love to talk to people and like people that work in service. I have the utmost respect for them. And I'm always, 
making an extra effort to make sure that I'm not being rude or inconsiderate or whatever. Um, but I think that one thing that's frustrating when I read these things is that, and it's been bothering me for quite some time, is that people don't know like the real side of me, really, like the day-to-day -day Austin. And the day-to-day -day Austin really isn't the menace that is, pro that is projected in, uh, into... Um, into the, on the Fear Ann podcast. And I enjoy I enjoy being silly. I, I'd like to think that people get a laugh out of it. Um, and, and, and I'm sure people do. Um, and I think it's funny and I think it's silly. But what's happened as a consequence of that is I think a lot of people have sort of gotten annoyed with how long it's gone on. And I think my image is sort of starting to become something that I'm not very comfortable with. Really, overall, I'd say. It's, it's not really something that I'm enjoying, if you will. So I do, I do like to be silly. Um, I do like being silly and I'm not going to stop being silly. But I think that I just need to have more intimate, personal moments. Um, a lot of you don't know who I am. And that's because I deliberately hide a lot of my personal life. Um, by design. And so you only hear what I share with you. And often what I share with you is, is the funny sh unhinged stuff, which is just a blip on the radar for what, of, of who I am and what I do on a daily basis. You know what I mean? I'm not going to stop being silly, but um, I don't know. I'm just going to, I I think I, I'd like to just I don't know. I, I just, I'm sick and tired of reading like the, like, like for example, it's frustrating. And I talk about this on, I talked about this on Hassan's stream is like, I will say things that will really get people, they, they, they take it so seriously. Like, do you really think that I believe that Michael Jackson or Taylor Swift is a better dancer than Michael Jackson? Like I said something ridiculous. I said, she's in, she's a, like, I said that. And like, I know it's funny and I think it's silly. And most people, I, I hope, believe, know that it's a joke. But it's so frustrating to see when people think it's like a reality. And like, like over the holidays, the other thing that I said on the podcast that I clipped and put on is I said that it's a known rule that all women or all gay men should be able to use the women's restroom. And although I think gendered restrooms are stupid, just, you know, whatever. I was saying it in, in a very silly, like, you know, half joking way, but people took it for like, it was like a political stance and that I was really trying to, you know, and, and they were just like, so, I thought it was so silly and so funny but it just like turned into this crazy thing. And I don't know, I'm just, basically what I'm trying to say is overall, I enjoy being silly. I love being silly. It's one of my favorite things. I just wish people wouldn't take it so seriously, number one. And number two, to combat people from taking that so seriously, I'd like to have some more intimate, personal moments with the audience so that it's not like, it doesn't feel as if, um, everything, it, that's just who I am. Because when you act a certain way um, for so long, people start to think that that's who you are and that's valid. Um, but I can assure you, uh, you know, I like to be funny and I like to make people laugh, but I don't want people to think that like, I'm this raging menace of destruction. Um, yeah, is this a midlife crisis? I hope not because I'm, I don't know. Anyway, uh, no, but like I read, I read a comment that really, that really spiraled this into, uh, into reality or me coming on and, and talking about this live was that um, somebody said, I wish Austin would, like, I hope Austin learns to talk about something other than himself or something like that. Um, which I feel so bad for because I'm like, I, I thought that that was 
kind of the point of the podcast was to bring your perspective to the podcast. Um, but it was just so, it, it hurt me so much when I read that because it had like 25 heart things. And I was like, that's just, to me, that's a consequence of being sort of a menace. You know what I mean? But that, but that, that comment is a consequence of like people, because I project such a menacing sort of, uh, facade, I think a lot of people think that they almost, it's almost like some of the people like don't even think that I'm anything more than that. So it's just, it's kind of like a, it's something that really bothers me. And I'm trying to find a better balance between being silly on the podcast versus um, like, um, like projecting, like, like, for example, like one, one of the things that I like, I want to address that like is so interesting is people have this perception of me that like, I'm this twink slayer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that I, and the truth is here. I love twinks. Of course, that'll never change. Right. But folks, like people call me the face of prep, right? That's what they love to call me the face of prep. Okay. And let me tell you the truth. Do I, do I have like, do I have sex? Yes, I do. I know that's, you know, it's hard to believe. I do have sex. Okay. I know that's some people, right? Um, but truly, and this, it doesn't matter. It's not a bad or good thing. But like, I have had very limited sexual partners and the experiences that I share are actually just different stories from the same people. In fact, what a lot of people don't know about me is I've been in long-term relationships for an extended period of time within my career that nobody has known about. Um, and a lot of, a lot of people, this perception that I've just been fucking running through people for, uh, for years is just not a, a thing. And it's not Hassan. I'm not in a relationship with Hassan. But like, I've kept that very private, of course, um, as a result. I'm not in one now, for the record. And there's been a couple and a few here or there, right? But um, I didn't share it because of my privacy. But like, the perception that people have is that I'm like this crazy, like, um, this guy that goes out and like wants to be, uh, like just fucks people and just... Uh, I'm actually, I'm actually kind of a hopeless romantic in a way. Like a lot of people don't know that about me. I actually really, when I meet somebody, I really vow, like I don't really enjoy, like uh, I I've done the hookup thing. I've done it. Uh, I, it is fun. It is a thrill. I do love like that sort of thing. But like I love to like, when I meet somebody, like even if it's for a hookup, I tend to like, my thing is I want to, I usually like want to at least have a drink first or have a meal or something and talk and get to know somebody before I sleep with them. Um, and then, you know, sometimes hookup culture is as such, you don't talk to them ever again, but at least the experience that we have together is one that they can walk away from at least feeling respected. And I don't think that a lot of people don't know that about me. And I think that because of the way I act on stream and on camera and everything, I don't think people really know that about me. Um, you know, so there's like shreds of truth, um, you know, uh, I, I think like, I think like just one of the things is that I care so deeply for other people. I really do. I care so deeply for other people. It's one of the, it's one of the, um, like one of the things that I hold very, uh, I, I hold very true and I, I feel like I'm not projecting that. I, I feel like I'm not projecting. I care so deeply for other people and I just wish that people understood that. Um, and I don't think I'm projecting that sort of thing to others. And so I'd like to do, in 2024, I'd like to do more of it. I'd like people to understand that, you know, I'm not just this chaotic, just uh, selfish gay guy that's going around fucking twinks all the time and blowing up your local uh, coffee shop employee because my coffee order wasn't correct. 
You know what I mean? Like that's, that's kind of the thing that really, and I'm sure most of you don't feel that way. Um, most of you I'm sure don't feel that way. But I think there's a lot of people from a distance that don't understand um, that what I'm putting on is sort of a, a, a little bit of like a, you know, a facade. I'm, I'm an entertainer. I'm here, number one is to make people laugh. Um, and, and, and I'm not like, I don't want to say I'm playing a character because it is a version of myself, of course. It's just blown. It's just, everything is hyper, hyper like, is hyperbole the right word? Everything's, of course, we're, we're there to exaggerate. That's what comedy, in my opinion, like I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a comedian per se, but I do enjoy, I, I get uncomfortable and insecure with that title, comedian, you know? But I certainly, um, I certainly uh, don't like, I certainly, uh, sorry, sidetrack. Like, I don't, sorry, sorry. I consider my, I don't consider myself a comedian, but I enjoy making people laugh. And I think that in order to do so, you have to exaggerate and push things to the extreme and in, in order to get that laugh sometimes. And I think that, unfortunately, that's all people see of me. It's a performance, right? It's a performance. Um, if you meet me, I, I love to like, you know, and, and a lot of people have, um, you know, well, the other thing is people say, oh, Austin loves attention. It's very true. And I, and I, and I that is true. I do love attention. I love attention. But you know who also loves attention? Every single streamer on this platform. That's why we do what we do. We get a kick out of the attention that we get from doing things. It's, it's like part of the job. It's just, it, we, we, we love attention. That's why we do it. We all love attention. I'm unashamed to admit that, right? Um, but I, I think like one thing is, is that, yeah, this is not, this is not my kick announcement. Um, I love to meet people and I genuinely like, like to spend time meeting and I, I even get, I even feel a little uncomfortable calling people fans. Like I, I, I th it's, it, it almost feels degrading a little bit and almost conceited. But I enjoy meeting viewers. Like it's one of my favorite things to do. And I, I try to spend as much time talking and making people and making people feel like, it, you know, that, that those are the moments I see as an opportunity to show people who I am. You know what I mean? When, when people come up to me and say hi to me, those are my, that, that to me is an opportunity um, to be like, hey, the guy that you see on screen isn't the guy that maybe you see here at the Abbey. You know what I mean? Let's have a drink. Let me buy you a drink. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I think moving into 2024, I think, and I'll address this on the podcast, but the message doesn't seem to be penetrating. I've talked about it a lot uh, in periods, but it just kind of gets swallowed up as me being a joke you know, sort of, and I'm okay being a joke. I have no problem being a joke, but I just don't want people to think that's, that that's all there is. You know, I think, um, I want, I want people to know that there's just more to that than just being a jokester. You know, I kind of leaned a little too hard into the gay, uh, um, being a silly gay, you know? So, I don't know, which is, which is fine. I mean, it is my fault, right? Um, but, you know, uh, I don't have flights and booted up at all. I'm sorry. I didn't have any of that. But, but yeah, I mean, it's just kind of a, it's just kind of, but yeah, I mean, it, it is good self-reflection. I think we can all grow. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know. So I, I just, yeah. I think also like my personal journey of sexuality, I kind of, I was so deeply in the closet for so long. I mean, you know, I didn't come out till I was like 25. 
Um, I think I kind of, I mean, when you come out of the closet, you just kind of, you go a little fucking nuts, I think. At least for me, I went a little nuts in the sense that, not in the sense of like sleeping with a bunch of people, but when you, what I try to tell people is that when you, when you've had to suppress so much of your personality or much about who you are, when you do finally come out, it's kind of like this super liberating experience and all you want to talk about is being gay. Um, and I don't regret it, but that's kind of, I think, a consequence of why I've, I've been so gay and talking about gay and penis and fucking twinks. Like these are things that I didn't, wasn't able to, you know, really do or experience at least publicly. Um, for a long time. Um, so I just like, I don't know. I think that there was a lot of like lack of experiences that I had, um, that, you know, you know, kind of want to make up for lost time, if you will. Uh, but, um, yeah, and I, I do enjoy it, and, and I know penis talk does get old, that we, we address the redundancy of some of these topics. Um, but um, so we're trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to do, do some things. But some of these, you know, I don't know. I, I'm not asking to assemble a, 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 you know, and I don't know how to really address it, but it's just like, there's not really much to address and there's nothing specifically. I'm just like, I just wish that when people saw me being silly in saying unhinged things that they wouldn't think that that's everything, you know? So like, you know, it, like for example, like, can I give an example? Like cutie, for example. Like, let me talk about cutie. I love cutie. Do you really think... That in a personal moment, or like a, one without the cameras on, I'm telling her that she's got beautiful, natural, voluptuous breasts. Like, do you, do you really think I'm, you know what I mean? Like, it's not something that I do often, right? Like, it's not something that I would do. No, I don't do that often. And if I did... It would be a, it, it, she, everybody would know the tone and, and it, when you broadcast things out to a, uh, like out to a, uh, what do you call it? Out to an audience, people forget that like the people in the room are in on what you're saying and they understand the bit. But when you, when it gets sort of watered down and passed on to a viewing audience, that bit gets interpreted into not a bit, but reality. And I've learned that the hard way, I think, in some of these, the, some of the perceptions that have been drawn, um, you know, of things. But, yeah, I think, I think a lot of the desire to be private almost has been kind of a, uh, has created sort of a problem for me, almost. Because I'm so private, I'm only being silly, you know? So, I don't know. Maybe I'll start some sort of, I don't know. I don't want to talk about things that I'll start because people also say that Austin doesn't work. Uh, there's a perception, you know, that's the case. Um, you know, somebody mentioned this, started OnlyFans. I, uh... I actually, um, that's real, by the way. I definitely have thought of that. Um, but uh, I, I don't think, if I'm being personal with you guys, I don't think that, I've always been pro-sex work. I'm a huge sex work advocate. I think that, I will, I will, one of the things I'm very, I'm not, I'm not very confrontational, uh, in real life. Like I don't really enjoy a confrontation and, unless I really feel 
like somebody has been uh, like, like I have, a, I have a huge justice complex, which is why I feel as if, and I hope this isn't a bad thing, but that's why I feel like if somebody has been wronged from a customer service standpoint, like they didn't get what they paid for, I feel like they deserve to get reimbursed. That's like why I have like this Karen thing is because I have a little bit of a justice complex. So like, I'll usually confront people if I feel like this is wrong. Right. And one of the things that I will confront people often on is when people will be like, and my own mother, in fact, I'll put, I'll kind of, cause my mom's like an MSNBC watching liberal. She likes to watch MSNBC. She's super, you know, uh, you know, like a lib liberal parent, uh, watching MSNBC and, you know, doing all that. So I, I, I like one thing I confront people about is like when, when people will say a lot of the things like, oh, ooh, sex work. Like, I just wouldn't do that. Like, and they, they belittle the profession to like, you're better than that or something like that. Like people will always belittle it down to not my daughter or man, I mean, teach their own, but like, you know, you're, they belittle sex workers down to that. And I, whereas I, I believe is, people are gonna be like, oh, you're so brave. But truly like, you know, sex work is a, uh, I mean, what, what finds me so, what, what I'm so interested in is we all like masturbate, right? We all masturbate, but, and we all masturbate to sex workers, but for some reason, it's like this taboo. So like we're all consuming sex work, but nobody wants to like, I mean, not nobody, but like a lot of people out there don't support it publicly. They'll be like, oh yeah, I'm going to come to this, but ugh. you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I've never understood that. It doesn't make sense to me. So anyway, on, off on that tangent, um, I, uh, in fact, I, uh, I actually had, I had a, I had a teaching mo Well, I don't know if I should say that. Well, never mind. I, I won't say that. I, sometimes people, again, in the spirit of understanding that people will interpret things and take things the wrong way, uh, I, I don't know. I had like a, I don't want to say it, but, um, but anyway, in terms of me thinking about starting an OnlyFans, uh, I, I've thought of it because truly, look, I am getting older. All right, I am getting older. Uh, contrary to popular belief, those that think I'm 23 to 25, I am getting older. And I feel like my days, I feel like this is one thing in my life that I could never do. Like, I'm not 34. Okay, that also drives me. That also, you're, on, a, on a real note, I work so hard to try not to look young, but I really put a lot of effort into my image. I think most gay men do. Um, but like, I, it really irritates me. It really, really irritates me when people call me old. <laughs> it drives me nuts. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, so, it, it, God, I, I'm so ADHD. I'm so ADHD. Um, but like, I think uh, people's age, people perceive you based on your own age. So let, for example, let's say you're 30 and you meet another 30 year old. You're going to probably perceive them in instances as being older than 30 because your image of yourself is not that of a 30 year old right? For example, if somebody's 22 and they meet you, their perception of themselves is they're a 22 year old, but they look at you and they perceive you as older than them, but they don't think that, that you're in your thirties. For example, if you're actually in your thirties, they think you're like 26 or 27. I get it all the time. If I'm, if I'm hanging out with like a, a, somebody that's like in their early twenties, they think I'm like 26 or 27. If I'm hanging out with somebody in their late 20s to early 30s, they think I'm 34. It's like, no, it just depends on who and how you perceive yourself, how you think somebody else looks, right? Yeah, and I'm not in my early 20s, okay? I'm not in my early 20s. I'm not in my mid 20s. I'm, uh, you know, like I, I, I just don't talk about my age. I'm also, I'm younger than Hassan and I'm younger than Will. Okay, so uh, I can tell you that much. 
All right, I'm younger than both of them, right? And Cutie and I are around the same age. So there you go. Um, so anyway, but, uh, but, but oh, that's another, sorry, we're just, we're just chatting tonight. We're just chatting. Yeah, my name is Austin. One thing that I've, uh, Will told me, he gave me some really wise advice and I hold on to this is I was really, I had a really bad relationship with aging and I'm getting better, but a really bad relationship with aging. And I can tell you why, because my experience as a young adult, young teenager into adult, number one, I was a late bloomer. Um, so I didn't hit puberty till I was like 16 or 17. Um, came to terms with my sexuality at 22, didn't come out till I was 25. So I feel like I missed out on a lot of things that young people get to experience, um, you know, in, mostly in the sexual realm. And I felt as if getting older deprived me of having a lot of those experiences. And so I think my, my relationship with aging has been really sad for me because I'm like, oh my God, I didn't get to go. I didn't have a date for prom. I didn't go to prom. You know what I mean? That's not something I did. I didn't have boyfriends in college and high school. I didn't go to like crazy college parties. I was really reserved and kept to myself because I didn't really like, you know, I, I don't know. I was just to myself. I didn't really figure out who I was for a long time. And so I think my relationship with aging has been like, um, it's been because I, I feel like I've missed out on so many of those experiences. And Will told me, he's like, Austin, you're gay. You're going to be able to have these experiences for a long time. It's all, and, I, and I got to thinking, I was like, wait, if I was straight, number one, I would have lived those experiences early on, right? But it starts to, gay people start to make a lot more sense now. We, as, as, as gay men, we, we make more sense because like, you know, you see a lot of gay men in their 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s even having like the time of their lives and, and doing crazy things. And it, I think a lot of us were deprived of that in our earlier years. And that's why we continue to have sort of a lot of these experiences later in life. When you, when you, when you look at traditionally heteronormative couples, um, they got to do all that shit in their teens and early 20s and, and college in, in, in college and everything like that. But a lot of gay men, and not every gay man, I mean, there's a lot of gay men that got to experience it early on. And thank God, more and more are, uh, are, are coming out earlier. Thank God. But it's like you want to live these experiences. So but getting back to what I said, my relationship with aging was, was not very good. And it still is, is a work in progress. But um, I think that overall... Uh, Will, Will told me, he said, Austin, you're, you're, you've got so much time left because as a gay man, you're still going to be, you're still going to get, you know, you're still going to have it even into your thirties and forties. You know what I mean? Um, so, and, and he's right. He's right. As I've sort of hit the market a little bit, like, you know, the, the, the be, uh, you know, there is, there's a lot of, I recognize the privilege that I have of being sort of like a heteronormative, uh, straight passing mask, masculine gay man. Like there's a tremendous amount of privilege that comes with that. Um, both in the gay community and in just real life. Um, like my experience growing up gay is completely different than somebody who is more traditionally stereo, you know, uh, doesn't really fit into those societal norms, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, and I'm cisgendered. There you go. And I'm white for the most part, you know? I mean, I, I am Lebanese, but uh, not that anybody would notice, you know? But that's not that. That's true. That is true. In fact, I, I, uh, I was very proud as as a grandson. My grandfather passed away in 2010. Um, I have very old grandparents. A lot of people don't know this. All my grandparents are dead. Um, they they all they all passed away. I I'm, I had a very good relationship with my grandparents growing up. I um, my grandmother uh, on my dad's side, uh, she had to be moved into one of those, uh, 
sort of like she lived in like a luxury retirement facility, you know. Um, and during a summer, I think it was t summer of like when I was a junior in high school, um, my parents uh, or I, I, I would go pick up my grandma probably every day. I'm going to say almost every single day. And we would go out to lunch. Uh, and I mean, you know, as a 16 year old kid, it was like, oh my God, we got to, grandma was bankrolling my fucking food. Like I, I got to eat at Benihana, fucking uh, Olive Garden, uh, you know, like all that stuff. But grandma and I, and grandma probably knew, you know, but she would go and, and we, we would go together. And, I, and, 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 you know, like I love spending time with my grandma. So it was really cool. Like we got to spend a lot of time together. Um, you know, uh, my mom's mom also had a very close relationship. She was an amazing woman. Um, sorry, I'm all over the place here. I'm just like going crazy. Um, but, uh, yeah, she, she was a, uh, she was a, a amazing woman. My grandma, both my grandmothers are very, very, we, in my family, we have a tremendous amount of the women in our family are very much held at a very high regard. And I personally, uh, maybe it's a sort of an old school, well, actually maybe not old school, but very much the women, like, for example, like my aunt, it's, Hey, she's the boss, you know, uh, for, for my uncle, you know, I have a very close, my, my uncle's my mentor. Um, and you know, when it comes to my aunt, it's like, Hey, whatever she, she's the queen, whatever she needs, she gets, you know what I mean? My mom, whatever she needs, she gets. Mom doesn't fly, you know, mom gets taken care of, you know, the matriarchs, they get taken care of, um, in, in, in our, in, in, in my family. That's kind of the way that we, uh, have always operated. Um, but anyway, so I had a very close relationship with my grandmothers. Um, but my grandfather, uh, Lebanese, uh, well, Lebanese, my grandfather was Lebanese. So my, my, my dad's side is Lebanese, is the Lebanese side. My grandfather was full Lebanese, um, Immigrated here um, uh, in the early, early 1900s. Um, but anyway, I was very proud as a grandson because I, I hold on to a lot of our family heirlooms. I'm kind of the, uh, the holder of all of our heirlooms. So I, have, I, have, I inherited my grandmother's piano. Um, my grandmother has a 1932 baby grand piano. Um, she got in a car accident in 1930, uh, 1932, got in a really bad car accident. And the guy that they, that hit her, um, uh, hit them in some old, like Ford model T. He was like driving one of those. She ended up being in the hospital, almost died in the early thirties. He was very wealthy. He was a very wealthy owner of some sort of, I don't know, business in the, in the, in the, in the, in the South Missouri area. And um, they got an insurance settlement and my great grandfather with the insurance settlement bought my grandmother this baby grand piano. And my grandmother went on to uh, marry my grandfather. Uh, they met in the war, World War II. Very cool story. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm all over the place. I hope this isn't too messy. But they met in World War II. My grandmother and, and grand, uh, I can tell you this story about how they met. It's the cutest thing. Um, they met in the war. My grandmother was a, uh, she was a musician. She, she would sing in these choirs. Um, and my grandfather was, uh, uh, he had enlisted to be an officer in World War II because he didn't want to go in the infantry. And well, guess what? They discontinued the officer's program and sent him right into the infantry. That's where he ended up uh, going. So he, ended, he was in the infantry and he was stationed somewhere in the south, uh, southeast. And yeah, USO, USO. My grandmother was performing for the USO. So she was singing and in a little woman's choir and she um, locked eyes with my grandpa. They looked at each other a couple of times. And um, anyway, my grandfather came up to her. This is 1944, something like that and asked if he could write to her. And my grandmother said yes. And they wrote back and forth. My grandfather went and they wrote back and forth. And my grandfather wanted to come 
visit my grandmother before um, they went off to, he went off to the war. Um, and so they, uh, he asked her to come visit and she was 17 at the time. My grandfather was 18. This is back in the 40s. This is very normal. So no problematic age gap, you know, but 17, 18, you know. So um, they, she, she, uh, they, my grandfather wrote to her and she said, uh, he said, would you come visit me? I'm going to buy your train ticket to come visit me. And my grandmother's mother, my great grandmother, wouldn't let her go without the, her, her mom being with her. So my grandfather responded and said, I'll buy a ticket for your mom too. So he sent two tickets and the mom came down and he ended up, uh, they ended up having a great time and trying to, my grandmother describes as trying to, trying to lose that nosy old woman is what she used to say. She used to say she used to, trying to lose that nosy old woman. Anyway, my grandparents ended up getting married in 1945 uh, and they went on to be married for um, 66 years before my grandfather died. Um, and then my grandmother several, a uh, few years after that. Um, but uh, anyway, I don't know where I was going with this, but my grandfather was Lebanese. He's a World War II veteran. Uh, he fought in, I don't know if you, there's any World War II buffs here, but my grandfather fought in the Battle of the Bulge. Um, which is a famous battle at the end of the war. Nazi Germany had uh, penetrated. <laughs> I'm using <laughs> some uh, some uh, uh, words here, but the, uh, the 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 Nazis had had tried to um, uh, break through one last push on the Allied line to try to push them back west. Anyway, he fought in that battle, and uh, my grandfather was a, uh, a very intelligent man. He was a um, uh, he was a part of a very prestigious academic society. Um, he was very, 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 very intelligent, much smarter than I was. Um, but um, he, uh, he always believed in studying. So um, one, in all his troop, they didn't give a shit. But he was the only one that studied the English to German dictionary. Um, and so... The, he told this story about how they were coming up on a house and there were a lot of uh, Nazi soldiers in the basement of this house and all the other American soldiers that he was with didn't know how to get them out and they were just going to throw a grenade in the, in, the, in the basement and just kill them. That's what they were going to, you know, that's what they did. They were just going to kill them because they didn't know how to, you know, they, didn't, they weren't going to go down there and risk their lives. So they were just going to throw a grenade down there and kill them. So... Uh, but my grandfather had, had learned some German. And he said, Ergeben Sie sich. Ergeben Sie sich. And which means, uh, if there's any Germans in here, I'm probably saying it wrong, but it means come out and surrender. Ergeben Sie sich. Yeah, there you go. Somebody knows it. And uh, anyway, they all came out with their hands up and he got to walk them back to camp. And, uh, uh, and they surrendered and he got to, he captured, uh, several Nazi, uh, uh, soldiers. So he went from fighting Nazis in, in the second world war to, um, through his whole life, he was an incredible, uh, one, one, so getting to what I was trying to get to, uh, I'm the holder of all my, all my family's sort of memorabilia and things like that. Um, he ended up, uh, being a, uh, huge advocate for his, he dedicated a lot of his life to being a huge advocate for Palestine and the way that the Palestinians were treated um, by the state of Israel. Um, and so one thing that I found over Christmas, I was digging through the scrapbooks. I was looking for my baby book, you know, to show to my mom wanted to see pictures of, of me. And I found a binder that was this thick of all the letters that my grandfather had written to senators, congressmen, presidents, um, over the course of 30 years advocating for particular rights for the, Pal the Palestinians, um, 
And it was a very proud moment because it's something that he dedicated a lot of his life to. <laughs> I'll be honest, I think he was one letter away from being on an FBI watch list. Like he was, he was writing, he was, he, he was a part of a lot of different Middle Eastern uh, representatives. Like there was a lot of focus groups in the United States that were advocates for groups, groups that advocated for the Palestinians. Um, but that was one of my grandfather's uh, greatest passions um, in, in life. And uh, it was a very proud thing to see because it's something that how I've watched Hassan and how, how the, to see how like my worldview and perspective is sort of supported by my ancestor. You know what I mean? Like my grandfather who, who I take a lot of pride in his, you know, his life and his accomplishments and things like that. And so I was like a very like proud moment um, that I was like, wow, my grandfather was a badass. Like he was capturing Nazis and advocating for Palestine. And, you know, uh, I don't know. My, my grandpa, my, he saw some shit too. Like we, we were not sure, but he, there, was, there were things that he would never talk about in the war. Um, like he would never talk about, there's just things he would never speak of. And he never wanted to go back to Ger uh, Germany. Never wanted to go back to Germany, um, ever. And he spent a lot of time there, obviously. And um, we, we kind of trace back of, uh, we, we were very unsure of why he had um, been, uh, or why he had been so close to the vest about certain things and not want to speak about it. And we track back, we have, we have sort of like his step-by-step -step, um, sort of journey through Europe in the, in the 40, or late, mid to late forties or, or, or sorry, early to mid forties. And he kind of was, he was in the general vicinity of either uh, a concentration camp or a prisoner camp. Uh, and what we, what we think is that he was involved in liberating uh, either a prisoner camp or a concentration camp, which makes sense why he would be so um, reluctant to, and amongst all the other atrocities that were witnessed in World War II, um, it was something that he would never discuss. And actually, my dad would kind of try to... Uh, get some information out of him in the spirit of it's a very important part of our history and to pass these stories on is important and my grandfather would get very pissed off and not want to speak of anything you know don't want to talk about it don't want to talk about it um you know uh hold on can i answer this text real quick just give me a second um hold on Uh, hold on. Sorry, Chad. I'm just writing a text. I'm responding. I left somebody on red for a minute. So I hate, that's another thing. Um, uh, I can't multitask. And I also hate leaving people on red. If I leave people on red, it is one of the worst things. I feel so bad. I, I have to respond. Um, you know? I just have to. Um, um Leaving somebody on read is like when you read, uh, read somebody's text and anyway, but so anyway, so my grandfather, yada, yada, yada. So I keep a lot of my family heirlooms. I was reading my grandfather binder full of uh, letters to, to congressmen and senators about Palestine. Um, so yeah, I don't know where that was going. I, I think I started with saying I had a great relationship with my grandparents. Um, I'm just trying to tell people a little bit more. Part of my, 
New Year's resolution to tell people a little bit more about myself and my history and where I come from, because I think a lot of people don't understand and they don't get it and, you know, started with the perception of me is just, you know, would I ever read some of Hassan's letters? How about I read you one right now? I've got a letter right now I could read. Let me, let me, read, let me read a letter for you. I've got a letter that my grandfather wrote to, and he would write them based on like particular issues, right? So like, um, like it just depends on the, uh, the issue. Okay, here we go. Um, this was a letter written to Representative David R. Obey of the U.S. House of Representatives. So let's see what year this was. Let's see. Uh, David R. Obey. He was a, uh, he was a Democrat. He's still alive. Uh, former politician. He served in the United States House of Representatives from 1969 to 2011. Do you guys know Obey? He wrote this to Obey. Um, Dear Representative Obey, I am a member of, I want to not say the group, uh, blank group on the Middle East, as well as this group. They say, we feel very strongly that the resolution of Representative Howard C. Nielsen of Utah should be adopted and that Congress should demand that Israel perform at least this one humanitarian act of reopening schools in the West Bank and keeping them open. Mr. Nielsen's resolution is dated May 16, 1989. He is to be commended for it. I would have addressed this request to our representative. Um, I, don't, I think uh, this, was, I, this was an Oregon representative, uh, Alcoin. So my, uh, yeah, Les Alcoin was the representative at the time in Oregon. So my grandfather says, I would have addressed this request to our representative Alcoin, but his view and support of Israel, regardless of her atrocities, are well known. So he decided to, uh, and he CC'd, he, he CC'd the representative of Oregon who had supported, uh, I guess didn't want to support the, uh, the opening of the schools in the West Bank. Um, so anyway, that, that's just one letter of a binder filled with, um, with letters to uh, government officials um, at this time. So it seems to me, so my grandfather was retired at that point in the late 80s. He was retired. Um, and so I think he spent a lot of his retired life uh, in basically fighting for the rights of Palestinians. Like, yeah, he's got, this is a copy. I've got an actual carbon copy. Uh, and he, the, the funniest thing is, my grandfather was a little passive aggressive. He was CCing. <laughs> this was before email was really popular. He was CCing his state representative who had some, uh, had some views that he disagreed with, um, which is pretty, he was very intelligent. He's very intelligent. He, he used to speak, um, um, oh shit somebody said chat people called it carbon copy it's literally a carbon copy it was copied with carbon paper um but yeah i i i, I do like telling the stories because as somebody said it it does sort of keep the image of your uh your grandparents alive you know uh because they passed away um, my grandmother met, I learned this, my grandmother on my mom's side met Jackie Kennedy. No, Jackie Kennedy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Jackie Kennedy. Not Jackie Kennedy. She didn't meet Jackie Kennedy. She met, um, who, was, uh, who was the Kennedy that ran for president that got assassinated on the campaign trail? Bobby. Right? Bobby Kennedy. Or Robert. Robert? Yeah, Bobby Kennedy. Yeah, so I was, I was at her funeral, and there she was with fucking Robert Kennedy. It's like, what the fuck? When did she meet Robert Kennedy? Anyway, she met him on the campaign trail. Evidently, back in the, uh, back in the day, she met him on the campaign trail. Oh, yeah, my family. I've got all sorts of stories from my family. Um, 
uh, my grandfather was in uh, Rush Hour 2. That was, he was an extra, which was cool. Um, he got to hang out with, he, he was very close friends with Dick Van Dyke. My grandfather was, well, he died, unfortunately, like 24 years ago. But he was a very, very charismatic. He's my, my uncle is, uh, in fact, my uncle's calling me right now. Um, my uncle is, my mentor is exactly like my grandfather. My grandfather was the most, like, and my uncle's the same way, charismatic person you'd ever meet. I mean, just lights up a room when he walks in. And he had just tons of celebrity friends and things like that. Uh, he himself wasn't a, uh, uh, a celebrity uh, himself, but, you know, he did a little acting and things like that. But um, anyways, um, oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, no, you see me? <laughs> so, <laughs> the person that I said I was responding to now is watching right now, so... Oops, hold on. Now I have to respond. See, I opened the message. So now I have to respond. Hold on. This is <laughs> um. <laughs> I kind of want to tell you guys a story that I'm going to tell on Fear And. Can I tell you it? I'm going to tell it on Fear and too, but it'll just be our little secret, okay? I feel like there's so many people that watch the podcast. If I tell it here, it's not going to be ruined. <laughs> Hold on. Um, okay, so I flew back home for Christmas right after the podcast, and um, I've been... Um, I, I know a lot of you think that I, I'm just like bankrolling first class every time, but I do. I, I fly coach sometimes. I really do. I, I never really book a first class ticket to, to LA. I just get upgraded a lot because I fly a lot. Um, but uh, I'm not just flying first class all the time. So I was flying in comfort um, on Delta. And, and by the way, there's no issue, right? A lot of people think I'm this monster that's like, oh, fuck, I can't fly coach. Oh my God, it's so disgusting. Not true. Okay, not true. Um... So I was flying, I, there was three seats, uh, you know, a, a traditional, you know, coach set up three by three uh, on, uh, 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 on Delta. And I was flying home from LA and I sit down and there's this big dude, big dude in the center seat and another dude. And they both have, he's got like a camo hat, big beard, you know, big belly kind of in my seat. Right. And I'm just like, ah, shit here. Look, I'm now I got to sit next to this homophobe that's what i thought i was like this the face of homophobia is what he looked like that it was just like ah oh, he's not gonna he these he, this 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 dude doesn't like me right and i'm just like ah oh, they're going back home and i'm just like i'm starting to get all libbed up i'm just like god these trump supporters you know yada 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 and so i'm sitting there and him and his him and his uh uh the, the guy that was next to him were where uh, the, the other guy looked the same way. I was just like, okay. So we, we get there and we're flying and I'm just kind of just, not my blood's not boiling, but I'm just like having these thoughts in my head. And um, we, uh, we start to hit some turbulence. Starts to really get rough and we're about to land and the plane's banking and it's going. On. I look to my right. These motherfuckers are holding hands. I was like, oh my God, this whole flight. I thought that, these, that, that, that this was a MAGA, like, conservative, like, face of homophobia. The people that were going to hate crime me. You know, these guys were holding hands. They were holding hands. Right? And, uh, and I was like, oh, my God. Even why? I'm the, I'm the one. I'm the one that was thinking. And, and, then, and then I had a, a moment of self-reflection. Where I look at myself and I'm like, I was wearing a fucking camo sweatshirt. I was wearing this sweatshirt. So they were probably talking amongst themselves after the flight. 
Like, did you see that conservative guy next to you wearing the camo sweatshirt on his way home for the holidays? What a fucking homophobe. You know what I mean? So that, that I'm going to tell that story this week on the podcast. But um, turns out I was the one that was judging and profiling these white men, <laughs> you know, for being uh, something that they weren't. Now, in all fairness, in all fairness, most of the time I'm right, okay? Just to be clear, okay? Uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the MAGA people. Most of the time I'm right, okay? If you see a, 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 a pickup truck with an American flag uh, in the back, usually most of the time they didn't vote for Joe Biden, okay? And they probably... You know, probably have some interesting opinions related to gay people. You know what I mean? So anyway, taught a good lesson that you don't, you never know who, uh, who people are, right? Guys, by the way, hold on. Kenji, for the record, I only profile white people, okay? I just want to be clear here, all right? Um, <laughs> uh it's okay. You can do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I hope you had a great Christmas. I had a great Christmas. Um, I had a, uh, uh, sorry, not to go back to that comment on the Patreon. It got 26 likes. The comment that said, I wish Austin would talk about something other than himself. It really hurt me. It really did. And, and then I started to think, like, what is, the, what is the point of me being there? What, what, what am I supposed to come in and talk about somebody else? It's the podcast. That's what I'm supposed to do is talk about myself. The, the comment itself wasn't the real hurtful part. It was the, it was the fact that 26 people. It was like one of the most top voted comments on the podcast. You know? And I, and I think, like I said, it's a byproduct of people's perception. Uh, you know? It's the point of the podcast, I guess. It's to talk about yourself. Like, come with your personal stories. You know? And, and I will say... I do feel guilty that we interrupt cutie so much. You know, it's very misogynistic of us to interrupt her. I'm so, I, I didn't, I don't realize that I'm doing it. I don't mean to do it. Um, but in my defense, she is a woman. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. See, that's a joke, folks. It's not, it's not true. I don't actually believe. <laughs> it's just a joke. It's a joke. Okay, I, it's, it's it's a joke. All right. Um, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Cutie, and uh, in fact, one thing I, I admire about her is her work ethic. Um, her work ethic is incredible, and she inspires me to do more. In, in fact, that's part of the thing I want to do is more. I'd like to do more. I think that as a streamer. Uh, I've been doing, I mean, a lot of people don't know this, but I've been on Twitch for like 10 years. Um, long time I've been on Twitch. And so I think, you know, I just kind of, over time, I just, you kind of lose a little bit of the, uh, I don't want to say the, uh, like the, um, passion but it, it just it just like you you become your goals become sort of loftier and those goals become increasingly more difficult to uh, they become more expensive uh they become more uh you know and, and look the most lebanese part of me okay is i'm a little cheap okay admittedly i'm a little cheap but not at the consequence of taking care of my people, okay? I want to be very clear about that. I, I take care of my people. I'm not cheap in the sense that, like, I'm uh, screwing somebody else, right? But, 
But like I, you know, sometimes these events they're a little, and so sometimes I'm like, it's a lot. So I, I'd like to maybe take a little bit more chance. In 2024, uh, I plan to do a roast series again. I did that in 2021. It was a lot of fun. I love stand-up comedy. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make Cutie the Roast Master General. Um, and I think we're going to do these in live audience formats. Not very, you know, limited tickets, like 200 people maybe in a live audience. Limited tickets. But Hassan has agreed to do a roast uh, in 2024. He's agreed. He said yes. He said he'll do it. Um, we, we did do one for him in 2021. But there's been two years of memes. There's been two years of houses and cancellations and whatever. You know what I mean? There's been two years. And so um, I really want to roast Hassan. Uh, I'd like to roast... Um, I think Nick would be really fun to roast Pollum. Nick Pollum would be an easy roast. But he gets roasted a lot. Um... I want to roast XQC. That's another one. Oh, I'd love to roast XQC. I think Pokimane would be really fun to roast. I think Mizkiff would be really fun to roast. Um, Ludwig could also be fun to roast if he if he would accept it. I think I think I think XQC. I think what I'd like to see on the platform moving forward is I think that it's become so, everybody kind of does their own thing. And there's not a lot of collaboration anymore. Like we don't do a lot together. And I think that that's part of what made Twitch so amazing is there is this desire to collaborate. And we don't really collaborate much anymore. And I think there's been a lot of unfortunate politics that have gone in between a lot of people. And I think roasts are actually kind of a very cool way of bringing people back together. Because I think that if you hate somebody, you want to watch a roast. If you love somebody, you want to watch a roast. It kind of brings both of the people in a unique opportunity to kind of bring people together that uh, typically would have no other vehicle to do so. So it creates and kind of, like you somebody said, it kind of clean slates situation. So I think, um, I, I think, it, I think it will, I think it would be an op, a great opportunity to sort of break down some of the walls that exist between the communities. Now, like you don't really see the Miz, the, 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 the OTK universe and the Hassan universe and the XQC universe. Um, there's not really much mixing of the communities and for obvious, there's been some, some, some things that have occurred over the year that have driven um, uh, you know, driven people sort of uh, uh, apart. Um, so, yeah, and then there's kick and there's all sorts of shit. Uh, yeah, there is an age gap, but there's, yeah, there's an age gap. We definitely have gotten older. That's another thing I've realized is I have just gotten so much older where it's like, I don't like to do those things anymore. You know, I've matured. I know you don't really see it as much uh, by the way I project myself, but I've gotten a lot more mature over the years. Um, and I don't really like enjoy, like a lot of people really desperately want me to bring back the Royale podcast. And I don't really enjoy it too much. Um, although it would be very fun. The problem with that podcast is by nature of the podcast, you have to platform some less desirable characters in order to make it entertaining. And so uh, it, 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 characters that I disagree with from a political standpoint, typically, like, like Hassan. Um, I'm just kidding. But, uh, but you have to like, you have to platform some people that are on opposite sides of the spectrum um, uh, in order to have like a, a, d a debate. And I don't really think that 
I don't really have a necessary, like a moral problem with that. I just don't really have the strength. That makes sense? And, and also, one thing that, about the Royale podcast is being the host of the podcast, being in the host position, you have to be neutral. And I found it increasingly more difficult to be neutral on things that I felt weren't up for debate. And I think that, you, that that's one thing like you, you can't, if you're going to host, you have to be a neutral party. Why do you have to be neutral? Because that's just, in my opinion, that's the job of the host. If you're hosting two groups of people, you have to be neutral. Otherwise, you're showing bias towards a particular whatever. Um, and you, you're supposed, your job is to keep the conversation engaging and keep the audience entertained. And so a lot of people used to shit on me back then. Oh my God, they used to shit on me relentlessly because I wouldn't, uh, I would just sit there <laughs> um, and listen. And my job was, that was my job at the time. It wasn't to, it wasn't to get in there and, and talk, um, you know. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah. But I'd like to do the roasts. I think um, I've thought about becoming a commercial airline pilot later in life. And I thought about taking the training and filming myself and training, like live streaming my training to become a pilot, um, which would be kind of cool. Um, you know, I think that could be a lot of fun. Um, I just need to find a the technology that matches. Uh, like, I'm not sure if the technology matches. I don't know if the technology is there to be able to, um, to be able to do the live streaming from the air, you know? So, hey, Frogan. Um, yeah, and if I guess if I crashed, that would uh, be against the TOS, but I wouldn't be alive to face the consequences. Um, is it legal? Yes, of course it's legal. I'm sure I can't think of any. There's no law that says that you can't live stream from a plane, I don't think. You know, I don't think there's any law against it. Um, you know, are you bringing back lover host in 2024? <coughs> um, <coughs> I think lover host is, is, uh, too old of a product to bring back in the same way that you saw it before. Um, I think lover host needs to come back in a different way. It needs to maybe go with a live element. So I was talking to extra Emily about this and I'd love to do lover host live with like in person lover host sort of vibe. Um, which would be really fun. And I think extra Emily would be so fucking good at it. Um, she'd be so good. She'd be perfect for that. Um, yeah. Hassan um, would be great for a, a roast, yeah. Yeah. I've never done a lesbian... Le I have, maybe I have. I've done a bisexual, gay... I've done... I haven't done a lover host with all women. Yes, there was a, a roast of Hassan in 2021. Um, I feel like three years is enough time to do it again. I think a lot of people weren't around during that time. I don't think, I think that like a lot of people would, uh, I think a lot of, there's a lot of new material. Um, I'd like to bring people in a live audience. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Cutie is uh, already asked and it's been granted to be the roast master general. So she'll be at every single roast. Uh, I think it would be a tragedy if I didn't invite Stavros. Uh, but see, we, I have to bring some new people in to roast him, right? I can't, I can't just bring the same cast back. You know what I mean? Like Stavros has to come back. Cutie, obviously. Will, obviously. But then after that, we should mix it up a little bit. I mean, Noah Miller was great. Uh, Nandre, yes. 
Nandre would be fucking content. I don't know why somebody just suggested the backup quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings. That will not be a person. Tarek would be a great one. Uh, I fucking love Nandre, man. That guy is so funny. He's so fucking funny, man. Yeah. I heard Jeff Wittick was like looking for a girlfriend and people keep telling me to do a lover host with him. I'm just like so confused. He's doing the H3 dating show. Oh, that hurts me. I didn't know H3 had a dating show. They have a bachelor. Uh, well, it looks like I'm going to have to do it. Ooh, the roast of Dan Clancy. That would be interesting. That would be very interesting. That would be funny. I feel like he would be down for that too. I got a great relationship with Dan. You know? I, I think Dan's great. And, and, I, and I talk to a lot of people about Dan and a lot of people seem to have the same relationship that I do with, with him. And part of me doesn't like that, but like, oh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But, but, but uh, it's just a testament to like how like uh, he makes everybody feel special, you know? Like he makes everybody feel like, uh, which is don't trust him. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, Prezzo would be good. Oh, he's a CEO? Okay. Got it. I gotcha. Okay, I see, I see. I'm kind of a capitalist. But a good one. A good one. I'm a really good one. I'm a really good one. Yes, I'm a very I'm the first ever amazing capitalist. Yes. Yep, thank you. Somebody said that's re I'm an ethical capitalist. I believe that when it comes to landlords, we should only charge what people are able to pay. Huh? Now, how about that? <laughs> see, okay, see, these are the types of things that I say that people take seriously, okay? These are the things people say. That, this is the type, now, that's an example of me being silly and people going and cooking me in comments for being like, this guy is such a fucking out of touch, loser, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah, leftism is win no jokes. So anyway, back to OnlyFans, okay? Back to OnlyFans. I am considering, maybe not OnlyFans, Fansly. Let's call it Fansly. I am considering starting a little bit of a sexy little alternate place to put my sexy content. Because um, you know what? I'll be honest. I enjoy being sexual. I really do. And I think what better way to do it than put it behind a good old-fashioned paywall? 
Um, I don't think I could ever be nude. Uh, I don't think I could do that. But I could be sexier than Instagram. Let's just say that. I'd be much sexier than Instagram. Yeah. Like, I think that I want to, that's part of my goals in the next year is to take more sexy pictures and more photography. Um, I used to be very insecure in general. And, you know, some of that persists to this day. But I, uh, I never like to take pictures of myself. And now I feel more confident than I ever have in my entire life. And now my fucking hair is falling out. Isn't that fucking bullshit? You finally reach your fucking peak of confidence and your fucking hair starts falling out? Isn't that a fucking joke? You know what I mean? I mean, it's fucking bullshit. Um, so, uh, look, my hair is not like falling out, but it definitely is losing some density. Um, I know a lot of people, most people say haven't, uh, haven't noticed any, um, hair loss, but look, as men get older, we all experience some degree of androgenic alopecia. Is that the right word for it? Androgenic? Androgenetic alopecia. We all, men, most men, you know, face it. I refuse to face it. I, <laughs> guys, I spend way too much on my beauty regimen every month. Just to, that's what you, so are, are some of you here in your early 20s? Are some of you in your early 20s? Early, early, early 20s? 20? Okay. Well, you're going to notice this. You're going to notice this as you get older and you, maybe you've started to notice this as well. When you're in your teens, late teens, early 20s, you get away with using like the fucking three-in-one body wash uh, you know, whatever, all, all those, all those products, right? As you start to leak into your mid to late twenties, you can't get away with that shit anymore. And it starts to show you'll notice in your friend group, there will be people that refuse to let go of that type of personal self care and it will age them. It just starts to age. People start to like, not like what, what you wake up as in the morning it gets worse every year. It just gets worse and worse and worse and worse every single fucking year. And so the self-care regimens become more uh, intense and more uh, expensive often just to stay fucking looking your age. You know what I mean? It just takes a lot. And, and I know it gets worse because I've talked... Uh, I, 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 hey, Andre, what's up? Yeah, you're going to be on the roast if we end up doing it. You just, to maintain it, like I fucking spend so much money and time trying to do, uh, doing facials and PRP and my hair and washing my face and doing my thing. All that for people to get on the internet, for people to call me old, okay? Like I bust my ass every single day in the mirror to really try to look good and people, I get on the fucking thing and they throw it all out the window and say you're old. You know what I mean? Um, but uh, anyway, I, I really take a lot of care, but I spend way too, remember I told you I got my esthetician? She's 72 year old uh, woman, esthetician. She's fabulous. She's in Japan right now, unfortunately. So she uh, isn't able to work on my face because she's in Tokyo. Uh, she's Japanese. Um, and she is incredible. Uh, and she takes care of my skin. I see her probably twice a week. Uh, no, twice, once every week or once every two weeks. Um, uh, see, look at this. JRT says 32 isn't old, except I'm not 32. <laughs> like that's, see what I mean? See what I mean? People say that I'm like that. It would be, that'd be a really nice compliment if I was not 32. I'm, I'm not 32. 
So that's the, that's the problem. <laughs> and I'm not 35. I think a lot of you haven't seen what 35 looks like. That's, that's the problem, you know? And a lot of you haven't seen 35 and what it looks like. Oh, thank you for the 10 gifted subs, Crobin 800. I appreciate that. Um, if you'd like to subscribe to support my facial addiction, uh, please, that'd be great. Um, not that sort of facial. That does sound kind of nice, though. Uh... Oh my God, my, t my entire team of uh, editors and um, I've got it. And a lot of people don't know this, but I have, I have people that work for me. I, I do. Uh, and uh, they're messaging me about when the meeting is because uh, I said we were supposed to have a meeting tonight about our TikTok clips. So behind the scenes, we, we do <laughs> look. We do a lot of like, uh, we have meetings every week to discuss the clips that we're going to put out on TikTok. Um, and uh, anyway, we're, we're the holidays. Um, the Austin Show team gets Christmas off, okay? And Christmas Eve, for that matter. And New Year's Eve and New Year's. Uh, actually, we don't actually have traditional working schedules. They just kind of like, hey, can you do this? Then they do it. You know what I mean? Um, by the way, what the fuck, Starbucks? <laughs> they closed a whole two hours early on Christmas. What the fuck? The grocery store was closed on Christmas. And Starbucks is fucking rolling, uh, you know, like till... Or, or, yeah. <laughs> but we say this as we're at the counter. This is what kills me about the American public. Is we'll be like... <laughs> You'll go to a place like Starbucks and that is making their employees work on the holidays and we'll be there ordering. We'll be like, oh my God, it's such a shame that they make you work on the holidays. Can I get a triple grande iced non-fat vanilla latte, please? You know what I mean? Like we are the reason why they have to work on the holidays and we all go to Starbucks on the holidays. That's the problem with the American public. We can't, we cannot stop consuming, right? Uh, oh, guys, folks, I did not go get Starbucks. I went and stole Starbucks, okay? I stole it, all right? I went and stole from Starbucks. That's what I do. Every day I go and steal from Starbucks. I don't buy it. What are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I don't buy it. I steal it. <laughs> I... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> see, somebody's going to take that seriously, right? Somebody's going to take that seriously, right? I can't win in that because either I'm committing theft or I'm going to Starbucks. Wait, hold on. What did Austin Ox post? Hold on. Oh, God. What did he post? Oh, God. Let me take a look. I just got a tweet notification for Hassan. I'm going to... It said something about IRL. I didn't read it. I'm guessing he's having tech difficulties. Oh, no. He's just too tired. That's all. Not this time. All right. Let's see here. Hold on. Let's see. Austin Ox. New Hedgehog. Did he post something about me? No, it doesn't look like it. Oh, in his alt. Us to Knox. They're protected. What did he say?
Is it I just drool? I'm so sorry. The reveal is he's had a faceless OnlyFans for, uh, and it's in the top 2%. Wait, me? Oh, he said that I had a faceless OnlyFans and I'm in the top 2%. Oh, I mean, that'd be awesome. I wish, I'd, I, wish I had a faceless OnlyFans that was in the top 10% or 2%. I don't know. I've got this complex, like... I'm not sure. I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to do the thing where, oh man, if I'm an only, if I had an OnlyFans, I'm not sure if anybody would subscribe. Like that's sort of that. I'm going to do the thing. I just don't know who would buy it. <laughs> uh. Did you guys know? That twink is the number one search term of gay porn in 2023. Yep. I'm not the only one, folks. I'm not the only one. That's another thing. Can I just vent for a second? People, I hate when people criticize others for their preference, their sexual preference. Like, you know what I mean? Like people will I'll always see comments in videos when I'm talking about my, my type. And they'll be like, oh, another generic white man liking another generic twink. Shocking. Like, fuck you, okay? Because you're not a twink. Like, fuck, go fuck yourself. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm sorry that, that my preference isn't you. You know what I mean? Like, it's not my fault. I can't help what I like, right? We all have different tastes and, and, and we should be okay with that, right? Um, like, I, I don't understand why people are always so critical about how we, how, how the types of, you know, that we have. Like, like, people are calling my preference vanilla, you know? Like, whatever, I, you know? We all like different things. You know, and, and actually, I think... I think I actually like twunks. I think that is a better association. I, I kind of like a little muscle. Maybe that's my type. I think twunks are uh, sort of like the, what I've, like a, I do like twinks too, but like twinks I think are like typically like non-muscular, but I always, like if you look at my, my page, my, uh, you know, my explore page on Instagram, it's all just like, I'll just show you some random guy. I don't know who this is. No idea. I have, oh, it's blurry. But just some random guy, I have no idea. You know, just, that's just on my For You page. You know what I mean? Let's see what else is on my For You page. You know? Uh, let's see. What else is on my For Explore page. Uh, wow, this guy seems pretty buff. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, some of these I like, just can't show because they're like half nude. Uh, Oh my God, this is, this is a famous OnlyFans guy. Anyway, regardless, regardless, it's just, uh, you know, we, we, and we all use, we all use Instagram like for the, for a different reason, you know, like I enjoy looking at beautiful people on Instagram that I find to be, um, do you have a seatbelt burn? Why? Am I red or something? 
Is my neck red? What the fuck is this stream? Do you need help? Brother, did you tune in for 30 seconds? Like, did you tune in for 30 seconds and that was your assessment? Uh, only the brave. Is that that? Is that the, um, is that that Netflix? Only the brave. Is this a, what is this? I don't know who it is. All right, Agnes, have a good night. Good night. Sleep tight. My kitties, you want to see my kitties? Kitties. Let me see if I can. Oh. Let me go get them. I'm going to show you my kitties and I'm going to get off. baby oh. oh he's such a good kitty this is my kitty this is one of them he's such a fluffy boy yes he is he's such a fluffer such a good boy such a good boy this is not the water waster and by the way that story was exaggerated I do turn the faucet on every once in a while, but it's not like I leave it on forever. That's, that's an example of people perceiving me to be this wasteful gay menace. I turn it on for like a second, let him drink, and then I turn it off, okay? This is not the water waster. He will drink water. The other one is a... I have a tuxedo cat. Bandit! Come here! He comes when he's called. Come here! Come here, honey! Come see daddy! Come see daddy! Yes! Come here. Come see daddy. Come on. Bandit. Come here. Come here. Bandit. Come here, honey. Come here, honey. Yes, who's a good boy? Yes. Good boy. Yeah, come here. Oh, yes. Come say hi. Oh, he's fighting me a little bit. That's right. He doesn't like to be held. There he is. He does not like to be held. He's the water waster. He's the one that refuses to drink out of the faucet. Isn't that right, sir? Such a diva. Now be sh Oh, 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 there he goes. There he goes. Off he goes. The absolute menace. Absolute menace. Well, anyways, guys, I, I feel very much better after venting to you all. I hope that this was a valuable experience. Um, and thank you for listening. And um, yeah. Hope you all enjoyed it. Random pop-up stream. Maybe we'll do more of it. If I don't see you, Happy New Year. Wish you a blessed... And safe New Year's Eve and Happy New Year 2024. Uh, if you don't see me, I'll see you on uh, the podcast. I'll be uh, filming it uh, on uh, the, the before the new year. And um, we're going to uh, film it before the new year. And then I go on vacation for a couple uh, couple weeks, actually. I'm going, I'm t I know a lot of you think that I don't work already, but I truly don't disconnect I don't disconnect. I'm always one foot in, always. And I think that that is sort of 
I actually think that when you when you don't fully disconnect and you're like half in, half out, you're less productive than if you were to just take some time away from everything completely and just don't fucking worry about it, you know? You're more productive if you just fucking, instead of half-assing your way through, take that full time off and just enjoy. So anyway, so I'm going on a, I'm, I'm going on a cruise, all right? I'm going on a cruise. I'm so excited. Uh, in the middle, in the sometime in in January, uh, and uh, I'm gonna increase my <laughs> increase my global footprint to dangerous levels. Um, and uh, yeah, it should be fun. I hope I don't get COVID. Uh, you know, and I hope it doesn't end like the Titanic. I don't know. Sinking on a ship doesn't scare me as much. Is that weird? I probably shouldn't say that before I go on a cruise. It doesn't scare. It's a very slow process. I feel like, you know what I mean? Like plane crashes are very fast, but the Titan, the, 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 the Titanic took, how long did it take to sink? Two hours and 40 minutes. I mean, come on. We got, we have Wi-Fi on this ship now, right? I can text somebody to come get me in two and a half hours, right? Right? <laughs> I don't want to drown, okay? I, drowning is terrifying, okay? But like, I know, babe, but we're not, I'm not f sailing in the North Sea. I'm sailing in the Bahamas, Okay? <laughs> I'm knocking on wood. Uh, like, I'm sailing in the Bahamas, not the fucking North Sea, all right? There's no ice down there, okay? Yeah, more sharks. Oh, also, I can't swim. That's another thing. I shouldn't be talking. I shouldn't be testing Mother Nature here because I cannot swim. So, there's that. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay, now pirates scare me. But there's 5,000 of us on the boat. I mean, come on. 5,000 versus a couple of pirates? You know what I mean? And who the hell's going to who's going to hell's going to jump on Norwegian cruise lines? You know? <laughs> like they're going to stick us up and steal all our mimosas. And fro and frosés. <laughs> Put all the mimosas and the frosés in the bag. <laughs> we don't have valuable cargo. We have just food. <laughs> I guess hostages. That could be. That could be true. Wait, you can smoke weed on Norwegian? Hmm. Oh my God, Bumper is on the, my cat is on my desk. And he's looking at the camera right now. He's on the keyboard. Oh, now he's in front of the, oh, there's his tail. He's, he's investigating. Oh, and now he's up on the computer. And you know, he's meowing and he's talking to me. Yeah. They were waiting outside the door the entire time I was in here. I've been live for an hour and 45 minutes. They've been waiting outside the door the whole time. Yeah, they're so cute. I love cats so much. I never used to be a cat person. Anyway. All right, guys. Have a wonderful day. Maybe Happy New Year if I don't see you. We'll talk to you later, okay? Peace out, everybody. Love you all. Peace.